Hi. Uh, oh yeah, I'm Pat from, that is from my sister. Um, why am I here? Oh, I'm just here. I'm here to tell you that this is our first ever YouTube video and to prepare you for some very dodgy editing. Um, but I did try my best and I promised to get better. Uh, what, I, what I also, and I forgot to um, put in the video, is please subscribe because this is a numbers game. And, uh, you know, the more subscribers, the better. We're really here to show off, the, we, my sister Dale and I, to show off our Etsy shop and, um, I don't know, just have a bit of fun, as you'll see. So please um, subscribe, like, uh, visit our Etsy shop. Uh, and make any comments if there's anything that you would like to see us do, you know, <laughs> within reason. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, so send us a comment. Thank you, and thank you. I hope you make it to the end. It could be difficult. Strap yourself in. Bye. Hi, I'm Pat. I'm the western half of Letters to My Sister. This is an Etsy shop and YouTube channel that my sister Dale and I have just created. Uh, by the western half, I mean I live in Western Australia in a town called Rockingham. It's a coastal town with beautiful beaches in the southwest of WA. So just check this out for a minute. They say it's rough as hell. Nah, mate, it's paradise. You just need to chill, it's fine. Yeah, too right. The rock has been around a long, long time. The water's time to a trampoline. We don't even know. It's a change, we got an Aldi now. I don't miss. So I'll put a link in the information bar with this YouTube if you want to hear the full version of Maddie's song about Rockingham. So, yes, the other half of Letters to My Sister is Dale, and Dale and her husband Martin live at the foot of um, a mountain in Victoria. They have a lovely property. not Bear Mountain. <laughs> I can't remember the name of the mountain, but I'm sure Dale will tell you when she posts her video. So where would we be without technology? It's marvellous, isn't it? Taking photos, cropping them and enhancing and adding filters, whatever. Um, I still have a lot to learn, but I'm enjoying the learning process. Anyway, these images all have meaning. Um, the photograph of the two little girls, that's my, well, that's our mother and her sister. So we've got sisters again, Nella and Auntie Teresa. Auntie Teresa only passed away earlier this year and mum a couple of years before that. So we miss them both so much. They are wonderful women. Um, mum remembered... Well, she told me a story of how she was a little jealous of Annie Teresa's beautiful blonde hair. Nanny used to put it up in ringlets, uh, a bit like Shirley Temple. And in fact, I still have the curling tongs that were used to put Annie Teresa's hair into ringlets. Um, I'd, they would be heated up on the stove somehow. I don't know how the temperature could be regulated so you didn't burn the child's scalp. Um, anyway, there's a little picture of them here. Mum was so jealous, she said one night she woke up in the middle of the night and ch chopped a great big piece of Auntie Teresa's hair off. <laughs> but anyway, clearly she was forgiven because they remained very good friends for all their lives. Um, 
Anyway, all of the pieces here, as I said, are, um, you know, of significance to myself and my sister. I've used some background papers, which are public domain, which are, I'm going to talk about later in this video clip. But um, the beautiful um, plates are from a book that my sister gave me for my 38th birthday, and that's far too long ago. <laughs> to remember. Um, it's by Sir Charles Gardner, who all West Australians would have heard of because we've got one of our big hospitals named after him. He was a government botanist and later on he became Governor General of Western Australia. The colour um, plates, the, the watercolour pictures, are done by a man called Edgar Dell, who emigrated to Western Australia as a young man in his 20s bought some land in the Kalamunda area, which is in the hills of Western Australia, and just did some amazing paintings of the West Australian flora and fauna. Um, actually, he lived to be like 106 years old, so it's pretty amazing, and he's left a legacy of beautiful work. I It was so hard to choose which which pictures to use for this cover because they're all beautiful. But I chose the Eremophilus, which their common name is emu bush. Um, that's our brother Roy's favourite plant and his son Eric. They, they plant a lot of them on their properties. They're really drought tolerant, wonderful arid area species. And they name the emu bush not because they look like emus at all, but because the seed has got a really hard coat uh, it protects it from the really harsh temperatures here in Australia. And emus just love them and they eat them. And inside their gut, they have a lot of grit that actually scarifies the seed. And then they go around pooping them out, covered in a little layer of um, fertiliser. And when the rains come, up pops another emu bush. Now, our Aussie emus, if anyone's from overseas, have been described as eight foot tall neurotic feather dusters. I think that's kind of an apt description. And so now it's about time I put my sister's journal in the post. And you can't send off a book without an inscription. So I've scrawled in the front, um, wishing us both good luck and cheers on our Etsy and YouTube and any digital adventures. And off it goes in the post. And as soon as she receives it, we can watch the next bit. Hi. So here we are. I've sent off my sister's little journal. And this is the one that I've made for myself. So I've already gone over the cover. This is... Designed roughly on the principles of a bullet journal. Now, uh, a few years ago, I did a two-hour two workshop on bullet journals, so I am by no means an expert. But what I understand is that they're a method of recording um, ideas and goals and trying to keep on track of them in the easiest way possible. A uh, bullet, I guess, for staying on target, and also there's a lot of bullet points used. So um, here we are. This is Letters to My Sister, established in October this year. Um, I always put an element of memorabilia into my work, and I guess it's that the older you get, the more relevant your history becomes than the future. Well, I have more memories and more of a past than I've got left. So, uh, yeah, a bottle of Prosecco that I opened the day that we went live with our Etsy shop. Um the inside of my journal is made with an envelope from the Perth International Hotel. I think I mentioned that before. Ah, uh, yeah, look, there we go. Seamstress of the month. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I've put pockets throughout just to, um, there's a place to keep things and to remind myself. These are little numbers for Etsy items that we list when you need to use a number. So one of the things about bullet journals is making affirmations to help keep yourself motivated to sort of boost your self-confidence and to keep you on target to achieve new goals so the first one that i've put here is that i'm trying to use a fountain pen 
And so to practice my penmanship, well, you know, that's just for me. Uh, hopefully it works because it's not that good, is it? Now, the idea of an Etsy shop started with my sister Dale and I because we needed to declutter. We were finding it hard to find things because we had so much. And since our wonderful mum passed away, we've also got her stuff that we'd like to share with like-minded crafty people. Our Etsy shop has kept us in touch on a regular basis. Sometimes you can let time just slips away and weeks or months could even go by when we weren't in touch with each other. So we've been talking pretty much every day, either on Messenger or through the phone. So it's great. So we share ideas through this and, um, and with everyone, anyone who watches this. We hope to motivate and inspire both each other and anyone else who's keen to get involved. Uh, it's to have fun, make new friends and to laugh. Uh, to share skills and information. We each have different skills. Dale is fabulous at making wine. Mm, so delicious. She also makes fabulous soap. I'm hoping that she'll do some YouTubes on some of these things. And she makes cheese. Wow, she's a great gardener too. Yeah, if you want an ID on a plant, she's the person. She's the go-to one. Uh, me, I used to, well, I've got a diploma in fashion design, so I'm not a fair bit about sewing. And I went to uni as a mature age student, studied history. So I kind of like to look into the history of things. So we are here to learn from each other and with the wider community to learn from you guys too. So the bullet journal, one of the best things about it is you can jot down your ideas and you can find them through these sort of pages where, okay, we've got Etsy items and here's the list of things that we already have listed and ideas. So the paper napkins, page eight. Now, if I end up with more than one page, I can just keep listing the page numbers, but I've only just started this little book. So on page eight, here we go. I've got some listed six. napkins for four dollars fifty including post and then if when we're through our youtube channel which i probably haven't mentioned <laughs> hey this is my first video um we'd probably like to do some tutorials and looking at napkins there's so much decoupage you can do with them um it's making ephemera like what i've done here this is a napkin on an old piece of ledger paper which has been turned into a tag and this pocket, which has good old William Morris and some uh, paper napkin of one of his designs turned into a pocket. Um, I've done plant pots using napkins to decoupage. Um, I, I've got to finish my ceiling, but I've been creating a ceiling using paper napkins. And I've covered furniture. You can use cling wrap as a glue. Or you can just use glue, liquid, PVA, or Yoohoo glue sticks. Fabric paper. Oh, I'll show you that sometime, but that's great too. So back here to the Etsy items. I'll just run through them because part of this tutorial is to let you know what our Etsy shop's all about. Uh, paper ephemera. We've already got listed um, lots of vintage book pages, pianola pages. paper, wallpaper, uh, all sorts, uh, laces and trims, vintage dress patterns, fabric, beads. I used to have a design studio in London Court in the 1980s and I still got some beads left over. Vintage magazines, um, I'm really interested in making digitals. Now, I don't know much about it just yet, but maybe through YouTube we can learn that together. I've got a heap of vintage clothing. Mum kept everything. So there are clothes that my sister and I used to wear when we were little girls. Uh, I've still got to go through that, but that'll be listed on Etsy at some stage. Uh, there's ephemera. When I say value-added, that stuff that Dale and I have made ourselves. Dale's made lots of gorgeous ruffles.
um, I've made some paper, no, what is it called? Fabric ribbon, where it's, it's strips of gorgeous fabric and it's stamped and embellished. We've made journals and notebooks, of course. And, well, we've got lots of sewing and fashion items, including buttons and haberdashery and books and all sorts of amazing things. Our YouTube channel, um, we just really want to have some fun and do something a bit different. A little bit of tutorials and flip-throughs of journals, but not too much. I mean, there's some amazing um, YouTubers out there. So, you know, they were already doing great tutorials. We don't need to make one too of all their stuff. Um, but maybe some product reviews or some reviews of our products anyway. Uh, I wander through Dale's Magic Garden at Bear Mountain. Oh, not Bear Mountain. Another mountain. Um, I'd love to show you around Rockingham. This is a beautiful beachy suburb in West Australia. Perhaps we could do some interviews. And I've also got this historical content that I love to throw into everything. So hopefully that will interest you. And so, as I said, I've only just started this journal, but it's a great way to keep um, copies of ideas and to jot down ideas as they strike you. So here's our paper ephemera. Here's a little pocket made out of some foreign language paper, and you can just pop things in, and it'll help me remember. If I run out of room, I can put more notes inside of that. Uh, digital media, as I said, I'm still learning about this, but oh my goodness, I found some amazing images. I mean, check these out. So I'll be looking at doing some YouTube and adding the addresses um, of where I found some of these images. And I think, other than that, so you could see, I've done it not very much. Um, it's a gorgeous little paper clip that came from a YouTube artist, which I will find that one. In an envelope like this, I've got the stamps. I'm using up mint stamps to send Etsy orders. Why not? I don't, don't collect stamps anymore. And at the very back of the book, I've made an envelope here where I'm also keeping items like our return address. And it's a great way to keep everything together for our YouTube shop. Anyway, YouTube shop, Etsy shop, you know what I mean. Thank you so much for bearing with me on this, my first video. Cheers, and I hope to see you again soon.